Thousands upon thousands of pounds of exposed gray concrete, a vast, empty, 50,000 square foot parking lot, and an abandoned grocery store. Failing black asphalt. A literal wall closes off a well-traveled central commercial corridor that extends into the recently redone downtown commercial zone on the same street. Steadily revitalizing and yuppifying city, new fancy stuff going up within blocks. Simultaneously, it's a failure of the past and an active big box near the center of a growing metropolis. The nearest place to buy food and basic goods for many low-income folks in the immediate vicinity. The expected response is to tear it down and start anew. But we have a better idea. Put a tunnel through Kmart. We'll put a tunnel through Kmart and reconnect Nicolet Ave. We'll declare the Kmart building a historic structure and turn it into the big box museum, keeping the general feel of the store as is. We'll chronicle the demise of the big box and the trajectory of consumer culture from the 60s to today. We'll chronicle the decision making that led to the Kmart development in the first place. We'll redevelop the area with true and abundant affordable publicly owned housing priced at 30% of residents' income. In the vacant grocery store next door, we'll include free amenities such as a tool library and transit hub. We'll combine the housing with a large public park called Parking Lot Park in the middle that ties the museum to the housing. This idea would be groundbreaking, draw national media attention, and create a significant culture hub near one of the most abundant and diverse central commercial corridors in the city. So why do we want to do this? Because currently the street is walled off by a Kmart. Because the tunnel would be an architecturally significant duck, a representation of an idea, the form influenced by the program and the signifier of the idea. And it would humanely address the city's housing issues by providing housing for those at the bottom of the market. It's a no-brainer. Otherwise, the imagined outcomes are... An office park. Proposals relevant only to the proposer and the bankroller. A velodrome. A new urbanist dreamscape, out of scale, ignorant to context, and developer-driven. Unrealistic plans intended to dazzle far from the end product, with giant parking ramps. Zippy architectural render porn. Dazzling features that are rarely realized. In a nutshell, the ideas for redeveloping the site center around erasure, the architectural embodiment of planned obsolescence. Tossing the old building, putting something flashy, exciting, and new in its place. Our plan offers a critique of these ideas, a critique of neoliberal development, and an antidote to displacement, while still achieving the city's basic development goals for the site. Our plan declares the big box obsolete, just as it declares the primary mode of development obsolete, and that it cannot provide what the population actually needs, affordable housing and basic public amenities. So here's what the Kmart zone looks like now. The Kmart blocks off one of the most central commercial corridors in the city. The bridge that once kept the street contiguous still exists just behind the store. The building is surrounded by an enormous, mostly empty parking lot and a vacant former grocery store. The immediate environment is currently one of the most blaring examples of disinvestment on the south side of the city. Within a block, there are several poverty capitalism businesses, including this checks cash place, this rent-to-own furniture place that closed in 2014, and this plasma center. There are also fast food restaurants, a worn-out old car wash, and an old laundromat. Meanwhile, only blocks away, new real estate projects are cropping up, including medium-density housing and new restaurants, along this lit restaurant corridor, complete with expensive donuts and a fermentation bar. And property values are way up only blocks away from the site. This house was valued at $180,000 four years ago. Now it's doubled. The building itself is stuck in the past as well. The electronics are outdated with two sets of security cameras because it was easier to put up a new set and leave the old ones up as well. The interior materials are cheap and cracked due to years of neglected maintenance. Plants are attempting to reclaim the cracked asphalt. Attention shoppers, we hope you don't mind the confusion in our... How did this happen? Before bulldozing the area in the wake of urban renewal, the place where Kmart sits was fairly normal, old brick, mixed-use buildings, and a streetcar line. Hoping to add large-scale retail to increase the tax base and inspire economic growth, the city bought and bulldozed the area in what was the second-ever tax increment finance scheme that the city had tried, and it didn't work very well. 
They bulldozed with only a vague idea for redevelopment, a mall-like setting. Unable to find an anchor retail tenant, the city's debts on the project came due and the site began draining money from the city budget. Thus, city officials were relieved to hear that Kmart was interested in building on the site. However, their interest came with a significant condition. They need to wall off Nicolette Avenue. Upon hearing the news, it didn't take long for neighbors to organize against closing the street. Various other site plans were proposed, but Kmart rejected them. A Minneapolis Tribune op-ed urged the city to go along with Kmart's plan, saying it was the best option on the table. The council voted 10 to 2 to approve Kmart's plans to block off the road. The only concession was that the company allocate $3,000 for a mural to be put on the back of the building. Downtown has its Nicolette Mall. Now we have the Nicolette Wall, a local business owner said in 1977. So the legacy of this bad decision is that Kmart has the option of renewing its lease on the store until 2053, another 36 years, no matter who owns the land. The city has spent $8 million trying to gain full control of the site, but thus far, Sears Holdings cannot be bought at a price the city is willing or able to pay. The city's desire to redevelop the land puts Kmart in a strong bargaining position, given the terms of the lease. Even if the Kmart closes, the holding company, Sears Holdings, can lease the building out to another business under the deal. From a City Pages story, will things look different anytime soon, says David Frank, director of city planning for Minneapolis. The answer is no. What the city's purchase of the land under Kmart does, Frank says, is create certainty that someday the city will own both the land and the Kmart, which it will immediately set about bulldozing. So, is Kmart obsolete? What do you think? There's an aspect of architectural obsolescence. From a land use perspective, the site represents underutilized space relative to its surroundings. Nicolette Avenue is thriving to both sides of it. It's highly underutilized in the context of the surrounding several miles. Architecture is considered obsolete when the existence of the building is no longer justified by the program. The building as it exists now is too big and too decrepit for its use case, particularly the parking lot which is so underused for its intended purpose that truckers park there for naps. Lack of maintenance and no update to the aesthetic have left it in a state of pervasive beigeness. Kmart blocks Nicolette Avenue, a major thoroughfare and place of a future transit line. Development patterns point to the obvious. Big box and urban renewal 2.0 do not mix. There's also an element of consumer obsolescence. Department stores once promised the premier consumer experience with We've Got It All, but now department stores are declining across the country, and vacant shopping complexes aren't hard to come by. Kmart is emblematic of this trajectory. The first Kmart opened in 1962, and at its peak in 2000, Kmart operated over 2,000 stores. Already in 2005, the number of stores was down to 1,400, and by 2018, the Kmart store chain has only 360 locations including five in Minnesota. And it's not just Kmart. This year, JCPenney, Radio Shack, Macy's, and Sears have each announced more than 100 store closures in the past year. And in October 2018, Sears Holdings announced it was filing for bankruptcy. Products contained in the store are short-lived, bound-for-landfill objects. The store itself containing obsolete products is also becoming obsolete. So how do Big Box and other chains deal with their building's architectural obsolescence? Well, they build a new one right next door, thus you get a new Walgreens next to an old Walgreens, or a new Walmart next to the old one, like this situation in Ames, Iowa. Which one do you think is the new Walmart? The answer is the one on the right. Michael, the Ames Walmart store 749 manager said, we're able to move things through a hole in the wall from one store to the other extremely unique experience. Most of the time the stores are a block down the road or a mile down the road, but to be able to do it right next to each other this close is a fantastic experience. So there is one major blaring problem with concluding that the Kmart is obsolete. While it may seem to be underused, decrepit, and yes obsolete in some respects, the Kmart is still frequented by many people who live nearby. For them it's the only place to shop for basic goods and grocery that they can walk to. So if the Kmart goes, do people go with it? The few blocks surrounding Kmart have a much higher density of people of color than even four blocks away. 
Lamar Scott, a Kmart shopper quoted in the Minneapolis Star Tribune, said, If they close this one down, we're stuck. The poor folks don't have any place to go but here. A typical model of redevelopment would lead in the direction of a de facto social cleansing of the neighborhood, which is already underway. Rents in the neighborhood are going up and people are getting displaced. We can't continue to let that happen. These people live here. They're not obsolete and they should not be displaced by a redevelopment of the area. Erasure and displacement is social cleansing, which is why we present our idea, which would consist of a successful redevelopment of the area to avoid erasing the area and its residents. To break out of the logic that got us the Kmart, we need to take a new approach and preserve the people that live in the area alongside the building and its retail components. Thus, public housing. It serves as an antidote to private housing development. It's housing that's not subject to the whims of the market. Market-based solutions don't seem to be able to prevent displacement or ensure affordability. You can find examples of this dilemma in many growing cities, including Minneapolis, Austin, Texas, Brooklyn, New York, Portland, Oregon, San Francisco, California, Seattle, Washington. Since this approach to housing doesn't appear to work, we dare say it is obsolete. So, here's the plan. The centerpiece, the tunnel. A transit hub connected to the tunnel. The Kmart Big Box Museum. City-owned public housing. A marketplace similar to the nearby Midtown Global Market. We'd invite vendors from the nearby Somali Mall to use part of the space and ensure there's a sizable grocer. A workshop space centered on fighting planned obsolescence through reuse. It would be a multifunction library with space for repairing consumer goods. A permanent fix-it space for the clinics, like the ones the county sometimes offers. Parking Lot Park, a park dedicated to understanding the scale of big box parking, commemorated with a plaque. Otherwise, just a nice park for sitting and whatnot. Plus a pedestrian and food truck path between the park and the museum slash library slash transit hub. Back to the centerpiece, the tunnel. It brings attention to the site and its history and creates a driving reason for the project to exist. It would be lined with windows and skylights to allow light to filter in and for commuters to see into the museum and vice versa. An adjacent transit hub gives an indoor place for commuters to wait for the bus or train, a sheltered environment with seating, charging stations, and quick access to adjoining amenities. Tying form to function, it acts as a natural connection to the tunnel, as well as a necessary public function. This is nowhere near unprecedented. Big box stores are often repurposed. The former Rainbow Foods grocery, just two miles east of the Kmart, was turned into a charter school. And in southern Minnesota, Hormel Foods Spam Museum was once housed in a former Kmart. What makes ours unique is that this one is blocking a major roadway, and thus its adaptive reuse must match the reality of its physical location. Putting in the tunnel instills a permanent remembrance of bad governance and engages with the obsolete rather than obliterating it. As the old adage goes, mistakes forgotten tend to be repeated. So, here's the museum. We want to turn the Kmart into a big box museum to chronicle the history of big box stores. We'll display merchandise from the 60s through today. The museum would provide context for the revision site, including the bad decision making that led to its eventual existence. The museum would retain the general feel of the current Kmart store, like an untouched, semi-abandoned relic of the 90s. We would hark back to various stages of big box consumerism, fulfilling museum goers' desires to nostalgia trip. This fits in with the experiential nature of new Instagram museums. Take, for example, the Rosé Mansion from recent New York Times article, The Existential Void of the Pop-Up Experience by Amanda Hess. Except our concept is contextually rich instead of utterly void of context. We'd play Muzak as cataloged by one former Kmart employee on their SoundCloud page. We'd include a section about retail workers through the ages, their dismal wages, and the modern plight of the Walmart and Amazon worker. The museum would emphasize planned obsolescence and its rise in consumer culture, tying it to the logic of capitalism. We'd include information about landfills and do product displays of intact products next to broken or discarded ones. Though there are examples of consumer product museums, such as this failed health and beauty products museum in Ann Arbor, or the consumer era exhibit at the Smithsonian, they fail to get at the essence of the big box retail experience. This would fill that void. 
<coughs> the housing. Our plan would also include housing. The reason for this, there is indisputably a widespread housing crisis, most evident in cities such as San Francisco and Oakland, Seattle, Brooklyn, but also here in Minneapolis, where rents are swiftly rising and housing prices are up. For the first time in recent history, a tent encampment housing around 200 people was established in the summer of 2018, and as of publication, there was no real end in sight. Another one is forming in St. Paul. The Minneapolis City Council and Mayor have thus far fumbled with milk toast solutions, including relocating the tents to a different piece of empty land. In the area immediately surrounding Kmart, rental prices are going up. In 2017, just blocks away, Low-income tenants fought and won against a large rent hike, but other renters haven't been so organized, and many have been displaced. In general, there are a few precedents of market-oriented solutions to these kinds of housing issues that are working. Instead, bolder actions are needed to prevent displacement and homelessness, including rent control and public housing. You may cringe and object, saying, public housing, that idea has already failed. What we would say is that while public housing has experienced decades of disinvestment and political attack, there are many residents still in public housing who advocate for its expansion. There's a strong precedent for public housing. There are public housing structures just down the street from Kmart and dotting many major U.S. cities. All of those living in public housing pay 30% of their income in rent, a far more humane rent scheme for the poor than even the most affordable of units under other schemes. Yes, there are strong roadblocks to doing a new national public housing program, including Ben Carson as leader of Housing and Urban Development Department. So, we are advocating for a city-owned public housing, where decisions made about the housing are localized and not subject to the whims of the federal government. So, is this idea absurd? Who are we kidding? Yes, it is far-fetched, but only because it veers from the ordinary. It's a popular idea to those who hear about it, and so we can creatively sell the idea to the neoliberal government and development apparatus. How? Easy. The area is of interest because of the major planning blunder that is embodied by the Kmart. The site's story has gained national attention. As such, it would be an obvious tourist draw. Our concept would plug into current development momentum and goes well with the new county health clinic up the street. And it's a huge departure from the expected. But how would anyone ever pay for this? The problem with socialism is that eventually you run out of other people's money, said an evil person. Well, I would say we can spend $10 million a year of the city's budget on a failed tourism project that fudges its figures. We can build this monstrosity with $348 million in state money and $150 million in city money. So it is possible. It's just a question of political will. Establish the will and the money will follow. We, we simply, simply need, need to reimagine re the realm, realm of the, of the possible. possible. How to get the idea across? Thus far, we've been using creative methods of promotion to push the idea forward through creative social media voicing, actual civic engagement, speaking at conferences, making videos, all the while pushing a larger idea of reimagining the realm of the possible. So follow us on Twitter and Facebook and demand that we put a tunnel through Kmart. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks.